guys, welcome back to BeeFit Beekeeping. The other day I went in one of my hives and I saw that, gosh, I need to put some oil in that door. <laughs> but I had seen that there was a mite on one of the bees and usually when you see a mite on a bee, that is a huge red flag. So today we're gonna talk about oxalic acid and we're gonna see about cleaning up some of the hives that I have hiding over there in the weeds. <laughs> Come on. Hey. So today is July 9th, so we're a little early on putting on mite treatments onto our hives, but if I've learned anything in my five years of beekeeping, it is that if your mite load starts getting out of control, it doesn't matter what time of year it is, it will be at a level that's unmanageable by fall time. So it's important to always stay on top of that. And oxalic acid is perfect for that. It is the least harsh on the bees, so it is my favorite treatment. And I got a fancy OA gun so that it makes everything super easy and super fast. But let's first talk about what even is oxalic acid. So you can get it as either a crystal or a powder and it's pretty cheap. You can get a really big bag around like 10 pounds worth for gosh, I think I paid like, I don't know, 40 bucks for it. It wasn't that much and that bag will last you forever. But it's originally derived from leafy greens and fruits and nuts and seeds and actually even cocoa, which I didn't know that either. That I thought it was only dark leafy greens, but I guess it's derived from a lot of other things too. So that makes it an organic compound that you're gonna be using on your hives, which also I believe makes it classified as organic if you're trying to go for like an organic standard on your honey. But because it's also an organic compound, you're able to use it with your honey supers on, which is a huge perk, especially since we're treating in July. You wouldn't normally wanna treat right now because you have honey on the hive, but if you're using something like oxalic acid or even I think Formic acid you can also use with the honey supers on, but all the other treatments they'll leave a residue in there. So it works absolutely great for that too. Okay, so how does it actually work? So there's two different methods. You can either do a dribble method or you can do a vapor. I'm gonna be doing the vapor today. It is my favorite way to treat these hives. Um, there are some pros and cons to both, but we'll get to that last but it ends up working by, so I saw mixed or mixed results. It either is absorbed up through the feet of Varroa mite or it's absorbed through their lobes. I don't think anybody really knows, but somehow it is absorbed into the Varroa mite and then it enters their hemolymph or their blood and it ends up killing them. Now, it's interesting to see that it is a miticide, meaning it kills mites, but wouldn't you think if you kill a bug on a bug, then it would kill both of them? Somehow the bees, do not really even notice oxalic acid, at least from my own observations. I've used other treatments where it seems to actually have an effect on the hive, but oxalic acid, I've never really noticed any difference in how the hive is performing or how the bees are looking, if they're looking sick or if they're still going out and being productive and whatnot, burning brood. I've never seen any of that when using oxalic acid, so that is why I like it the most. Now, I have seen a little bit of research. Now, I've never done the dribble method. I should start with that. But I've read a little bit of research saying that it can be kind of toxic to the bees since they're gonna be ingesting it and that's how they pass it around. The dribble method is you would be mixing it in with a solution. I believe it's sugar water you'd be mixing it in with and then you would take a syringe and you would coat the cluster of bees on each side of the frame so they could then pass it around throughout the whole entire hive. Only thing is they have to clean it off each other. So it goes into their body and I'm sure that doesn't really cause the best reaction. I was reading that it could possibly shorten their lifespan, but I also know a lot of beekeepers that swear by it. So it's really just to each their own, whichever you find work best for you. Okay, so before I put my big old mask on, Let's talk about the last part because you're probably not going to be able to hear me once I put it on. So this is my oxalic acid vaporizing gun, which I do need to clean. Um, I got it from Larabi's. It is an absolute game changer and worth every single penny. I paid for around $500 for it for this and it's completely battery powered. I have 
two DeWalt batteries. Um, it also works with like Milwaukee and Manitoba and a couple other different batteries you can get as well. Gosh, I was not expecting all the bees to be out right now. It's been raining. I should actually mention that. So typically you would want to treat with oxalic acid if you're doing a vapor early in the morning or late in the evening so all the bees are in there. This yard is just conveniently located on my way home from work. So that's why I was like, hey, I will just do it right now on my way home. It's been raining, so they should all be in the hive, but it looks like they're doing the orientation flights right now. So, hmm, that will make this vapor a little bit less effective. But anyways, okay, so back to how it works. So oxalic acid cannot actually penetrate the wax cappings like formic acid can. So it can only kill mites that are walking around in the hive or that are living on the bee itself. So that being said, you have to do it in a couple rounds of treatments just to make it super, super effective. Otherwise, every single time you have a round of brood emerging out of your colony, you're going to be releasing more varroa mites into your colony. So that is why a lot of people, if they do a vapor, they do it either four treatments spaced five days apart or five treatments spaced five days apart. That's usually what I do. This time I've been kind of stretching it a little bit in all honesty. Um, I'm trying out doing one time per week for, I'm going to do four treatments for sure, maybe five five we'll see the main purpose is you want to get a full month of treatment in and the reason i say that is a worker bee takes 21 days to develop so in theory from the moment that it's an egg all the way up until it's emerging then you're going to get all of the all of the brood will have emerged during the time that you are putting that vapor inside the hive now the reason i want to do a full month though is that you want to get that last little bit of cleanup it's like that last little like go in clean up the last bit of it so there's nothing else to worry but because the vapor is going to be in there only for a short amount of time that is also why it is better to treat them when you know all the bees are going to be in the hive too but Oh well, I guess it is what it is. Um, I have a couple more treatments to do on this yard, so it'll eventually clean them up. But one other thing that I should mention is that if you are going to be using an oxalic acid vapor, you 100% have to wear a mask. Now this is actually one of the cons about the vaporizer. And the reason I say that is that it seems to be even when I wear a mask, I still am, am at some point inhaling vapors. Now maybe I need to get a better fitted mask. Maybe that's the problem. I've made this super tight on me, but whenever I bend down, sometimes I inhale a little bit of oxalic acid and trust me, you don't want to inhale it. It is extremely toxic. Um, so that is one of the perks with the dribble method. I will say you don't have to wear a mask, so that makes it even better. You don't have to possibly risk putting yourself in a toxic situation. Now, of course, you don't want to have it on your skin. It'd probably absorb and that wouldn't be a good situation either. But like I said, it's whatever you think is best. Um, I was reading a little bit too, and correct me if I'm wrong, that when you do the dribble method, you're always supposed to do it like once every now and then, not a once every week kind of situation just because it of it being a little bit more harsh on the bees but i honestly need to learn more about the dribble method i've never used it before i've only ever heard about it and i've heard some beekeepers like it but yeah all right enough of my rambling so you're about to see why i love this vaporizer so much so literally this thing will power it through this entire yard. I've learned that this will usually go for around, because there's 16 colonies here. It'll, it'll do about 25 colonies, I'd say. If you have some singles, then sometimes it'll do a little bit more. Um, you maybe push for 30 colonies, so that makes it super convenient. But I do always have an extra battery on me, just in case. It would suck to be in the middle of treating a yard and then for a battery to die. But anyway, so all I do is I plug it, I put this on it and turn it on with this little switch over here. And then I just wait for it to warm up to 445 degrees. I usually do it as soon as I get here so that by the time I suit up and get everything ready, it is all ready to go. But my timing's a little off today, but that's okay. So, all right, it's probably gonna be hard to hear me now. <laughs> And this mask is for organic acids. That is why it's pink. So make sure you get a mask that will actually filter it out because not all of them will. 
Okay, so while this heats up, we'll also talk about dosage. So, I believe the EPA suggests that you use one gram of oxalic acid per brood box. So this hive in particular, they're still working on building out this top box last time I checked, but that was honestly two weeks ago. So I will do two grams because I know they're already going to be up in here doing their thing. But if you accidentally spill a little bit more than two grams in there, then, you know, it's okay. The bees, they, they might benefit a little bit from that. But, uh, yeah, that's on you. <laughs> yeah, so I do need to clean this out. So I see there's still a little bit of smoke coming out from last time I was using it. They recommend to clean it after every, like, 50 hives or something like that. So I should probably clean Alright, so it got kind of hard to understand what I was saying through the mask. So I figured I'd walk you through what I'm doing here. So this little thing that I put into the top of the OA gun, that is adjustable. You can move it so that you're putting in 1 gram versus 2 grams, 3 grams, 4 grams. You get the picture. Um, and then you just stick it in your bag of OA like I'm about to do right here. It stuffs it down in it and then you put it down, press the button, and it drops into the gun. It's super fast and then I can just sit here and watch it. It takes around like 90 seconds or so for it to complete one hive. It depends on how big the hive is because what it does is the moment that those crystals hit the, the gun and start heating up, it drops the temperature down to sometimes even like 380 depending on how big of a dose you're giving them. But then what you're wanting to do is just wait for that temperature to get back up to 445 and that's how you know that the vaporization, vaporization <laughs> is complete. You can also see I've been rotating through these three towels and the reason for that is I'm trying to keep all of the oxalic acid vapor trapped inside the hive. So the moment that I pull out that gun, I will then use the towel to try to plug up the rest of the entrance so that it sits in there for at least a couple minutes. They say that it's beneficial to have the towel on there for up to 10 minutes, but I've just been rotating through these three and by the time I need my next towel, that's how long I leave it on there. So the reason I picked this gun, I should have gotten a video showing you the top of it but there's these little hooks oops <laughs> there's these little hooks that I have on that are on the top of the gun that allows it to sit in the entrance of the hive like this the reason I like this is now I don't have to go around and drill a hole into the side or the back of my hive and that's kind of hard to do when you have a pallet like this you would have to do it in the side of each hive versus the back and then you're putting a little hole in there too and these hives in particular already have that bottom entrance and on top of that they already have a uh, drainage hole that they've been using also as an entrance on their bottom board and some of these even have like an upper entrance since some of these boxes are a little bit worn but I don't want to have to drill holes unless I have to so that's what make th makes this gun amazing you can just throw it in the front entrance and it's able to grip on just like that with no problems or falling off unless you bump it like I did there <laughs> look at all of those beautiful flowers the bees are so happy right now there's so many black eyed Susans out here some other purple flowers I don't know what they're called white flowers orange flowers perfect place for bees. See what I mean? I just can't get them to keep them in there. They keep trying to toss them out their front door. Those are there to protect you guys. I mean, it's good, I guess, if they like to clean house. <laughs> So what I was showing you guys there is that polyester cloth that they have dangling out of the hive. I put that on the bottom board of each hive to help control small hive beetles. They'll get trapped inside it and they can't move because their wings will get stuck. Well, I can't get the bees to keep them in their hive. They keep throwing them out, which that's good. That means that they like to uh, clean up and keep their, keep their hive clean, but not so good when you try to put something like that in there to help a small hive beetle. So... For anybody who also uses these to control sm small hive beetles, how do you guys get them to stay in the hive? I need your help. <laughs> Woo, all right. Now I can finally breathe again. It is so hard for me to breathe in this thing, let alone the occasional OA inhalation I get. It wasn't so bad today. I've learned just to always hold my breath whenever I bend down to have to put a new dosage on. But still, I need to get a different mask, I guess. So it is that fast and that easy. 
only took me, I think, like 20 minutes, 15 minutes. It hasn't it didn't take me very long at all to do all those hives. It was around 60 seconds per hive. So you can knock out a lot of hives. Honestly, the part that's gonna take you the longest is going from bee yard to bee yard. So that is it for me today. I hope this was a helpful lesson on, on uh, what OA is as you try to figure out what works best for you and your hives. Now, I will say it is always good to rotate your treatments. Don't just stick to one treatment. I know we all have our favorites that we love the most, but that is how we build up resistance in varroa mites. And we don't want that happening because then we'd have a really big problem on our hands with our bees. So I hope that was helpful. I'll see you guys soon and don't quit and be fit.